Hi everyone, it's Rosanna and I am just setting up my table here for the last little part. I've been working on this spun cotton mouse project for so long for you guys and I probably because I kept wanting to add elements to it. Um, so the last thing I'm working on is still photos for a blog post that will be on the website. So I've got all of the rest of this video shot and I'm just doing the intro now. Um, and I just thought I would say um, that there are kits, supply kits for spun cotton. It's like a little starter kit of the supplies that I use. When I'm being very fancy and making spun cotton to sell, um, this is what I will use. And because some of you just are very interested in having exactly what I use and have asked and requested, I put it together. Um, but you can definitely just use cotton balls and source your own materials and I'll give links in this um, video in the description and on the blog post. Um, and I, so that there's a kit, <laughs> if you are interested, you can check that out. And then there's a little um, like eight page zine that I've worked on the last month or so um, with some new illustrations. And I think it's kind of cute and fun. And then there will be some other little goodies that you can get um, tucked in with your kit. And anyway, we're going to get going with our mouse make along finally. Long awaited. I hope you're excited. I have ended up with an army of cute little mice. Um, because I have made, and <laughs> because I'm um, wanting to uh, make sure that I'm really doing this right for you, but also you'll notice that none of them are the same. I'm still um, very bad at doing identical things, so each one has its own character, but I think they're all really cute and special, and I hope that you can make a special little mouse for yourself. So let's get making. So I'm very quickly going to go over the materials we'll need. If you've done um, tutorials with me in the past, it's basically the same and you can skip this. And I will talk more about why I pick particular um, types of materials later on in the tutorial. I won't bore you here with that. Um, but you'll need some sort of a pipe cleaner or chenille covered wire. Um, if you don't have that, you can use any kind of wire. I find that paper covered wire is going to work um, better. At, the cotton sticks to it better than an uncoated wire. But if you have uncoated wire, you can cover that with some sort of tape or just work with it and um, try and try to get the cotton to stick. It will be a little bit trickier. Um, so some sort of wire. Um, I'm going to show you how to do this just using cotton balls like what you get at the drugstore or discount store. Just the very basic cotton balls that you buy to take off makeup or whatever you use um, spun cotton or cotton wool for. Um, and I will show you also, this is the actual cotton fiber that I buy now for um, making the pieces that I sell. Um, it just gives me more control and a smoother finish I just, it's a nicer product, but I, I say that anyone um, is fine starting with cotton balls because you're going to um, develop your skills with this. There's no reason to have the fancy stuff until you know if you actually like this craft. Um, so then your glue and water mix. I always use school glue um, and one part glue to three or four parts water. You could have some sort of a craft glue, um, especially with this mouse, we will probably use a little bit of straight glue um, to get the cotton to stick to the tail and possibly the um, little feet. So um, some sort of glue is fine, either one of these. I don't ever use the clear tacky as, as my glue mix. I just, it doesn't mix with the water as easily. Um, scissors. A little brush. I use a brush for the sculpting, but you could use your fingers if you wanted to. Um, for painting details, you might want some finer brushes. Um, you can either go with acrylic craft paint for the finishing or watercolor. I hear mixed things. Some people prefer watercolor. Some people don't have luck with that and do the craft paint. So that's kind of probably depends on the paints you have and maybe your experience level with them. Now in the past I've used foil 
and tape when I was making armatures and today I'm going to show you how to do this without that but you're welcome to use the foil and tape if you're comfortable with that but I'm going to show you how to do without that today. Um, so that should be everything that you need and let's get going. This is a little addendum I forgot because I haven't done this in the past. I'm using beads um, for eyes today. I'm also going to show you how to just paint them on. Um, I don't typically use beads in the things that I make, but so many of you have asked in the past how I paint eyes that I thought, well, maybe it would be easier um, if I just give the option for a little black bead eye, and those will be um, included in the supply kits. Okay, so I made a number of little mice trying to get to the one that I really liked the best um, and thought would be a good prototype for you and you may like one of these better I don't know but this was the one I liked the best so I'm going to I don't ever really replicate things exactly but I'm going to make one very similar to this in size and expression and um, form um, so the way I start um, is usually for the body I'll actually use a pipe cleaner. This is actually um, the kind that you use for cleaning tobacco pipes and you can find these on Amazon and on Etsy too I think um, and I will link these exact ones and then I'll also have um, supply kits available in my shop. I haven't done that before but I've had so many requests um, that I've put together a little um, starter spun cotton kit and that will be available with the kind of cotton that I use um, for my actual work I sell. Um, and it'll have, you know, all, all of my kind of favorite materials at this point. Um, so you can look for that or you can um, follow the links in the description and go and buy some of these things yourselves and have a great big supply for your experimenting. Um, this kind of pipe cleaner is not my favorite, but it will work. Uh, for small figures, you might have to trim some of the fuzzy off. The wire itself is thinner than what you're going to get with this kind of pipe cleaner, and it's just um, not as high quality of a product, but you can make it work. If that's what you've got, go ahead and use it. You don't need to um, order 200 of these unless you're, unless you're really planning to go crazy with spun cotton um, or maybe some other project but like you could make um I have a friend who does um candy canes with these and at Christmas time so maybe you want to do that anyway um paper covered wire this is like a florist's wire you can buy it on a spool right now I am buying these I think 12 inch lengths because or maybe it's 14 but um, I'm buying them like this because I found that this particular brand of wire the paper doesn't unwrap and some of the paper covered wire you get does unwrap um, as you're working with it and that is irritating because then you have to worry about gluing the paper back to your wire before you can continue with your project. Um, so this is good paper covered wire, it's 26 gauge and for me that is just the right amount of strength and flexibility for small figures. Okay, so this is what I will use for, sorry to explain all this so much, but I mean, some of these things do matter um, if you're wanting to be sort of serious and not have to fuss around with um, materials not really doing what you need them to do. Um, so what I do is I bend over the top and then I just take a length and spin it around once for the arms and then I will spin it around. And if your wire isn't holding tight, you can definitely give it another spin so that it doesn't um, rotate on the pipe cleaner. Okay, so you're just going to have this, which doesn't look that impressive, but that's how everything, for me at least, starts. Now, in the past, I would have then wrapped the body part of this. Okay, I trimmed that off and I'm just folding it up. In the past, I would have wrapped the body part of this with foil and then um, wrapped the foil in tape. Um, with this mouse, I thought I might try that again just because that's what I used to do. But in the past year or so, I've done less with the foil for, at least for my animals, because um, I'm doing smaller animals a lot of times 
and the form of them is getting, I would say, a little bit less bulky. I don't know how to describe it, but um, not lithe. I don't know what I would say. More, it looks, there's more motion to it maybe, and with foil sometimes I feel like it doesn't look um, as active. I, I don't know if that's going to make sense to you, but um, I've seen a difference in what I make with foil and without. I think with foil you will get a more primitive shape, and I think that that's cute, and I like primitive shapes, and if that's the style that you want, then go ahead and use that. Um, but that's not what I've been doing quite as much, at least with stuff to sell. Um, okay, so then I just took a length of my wire and twisted it around again, probably two or three times around this abdomen part and that will be the tail. Um, I would say just always leave quite a bit more for the arms, legs, and tail than what you think you might need just because um, you, you don't you not ever know when you're first starting quite how it's going to end up and it's much better to have wire to trim off than to realize oh geez I've got one leg that's like way too short and now I have to decide if I'm just going to have my mouse, you know, have a short leg or what What am I going to do? Um, so just leave them long, even though it looks kind of kooky and that's not the proportions of a mouse. Um, that gives us um, lots of wiggle room. So what I like to think about when I'm starting a figure um, is how I'm going to use it or where I'm going to display it or where I think someone else might display it. And... Um, <clears throat> Something to keep in mind with a small figure is um, like, okay, if you're setting a little mouse down on a table like this, which is way below our eye line, if um, it's looking, this one is not looking straight forward, but it's not looking up as much as this one. So see how this one is less engaging with us, with us looking down on them. This one looks like, oh, it could be, you know, like talking to another little mouse down here but it's not engaging with us the way this one is. And these two um, are more looking up. So um, so I decided that I wanted, for this particular mouse, I wanted it to engage with the person. Um, and I was thinking of it as being like a little companion mouse. Now, if you would set it up um, on your windowsill, it will, you might be able to get away more with looking straight on. But even then, I think this one looking up is still going to be um, sweet. Now, if you're making a mouse like for a dollhouse or something, and they're going to be engaging with other little dolls and mice, then this probably makes more sense. But so I just, and it's not, you know, don't, it's not um, the end all. You don't, don't have to make like, there's not like a right, right decision. There's just decisions and some um, may end up being something that you're happier with than others in the long run. But, you know, it's just a spun cotton mouse at the end of the day. So, you also want to decide because these don't have flexibility once they're done. This is not, um, it's, it's stiff. It's not like a needle. Although, um, depending on how you needle felt, um, some people do a very, very tight form and some do a flexible. So there is some flex sometimes in needle felting, which is where I started before I did this. Um, but a spun cotton figure will not really be mobile. Um, possibly I do make some where they can move their arms a little bit but if you do too much movement they're gonna crack at the joints um, so anyway so decide how you want your character to be looking um, what kind of general pose you want it to be in so I'm maybe gonna make this one looking a little bit over its shoulder or to the side or however you want to say that Now I know that this armature looks like it's gonna be way too big but I don't think it's going to be, although I did not take an actual measurement when I was making the first one. <laughs> but um, I'm, I'm thinking this is about what I started with. And the other reason I'm not using foil um, today is because with something this small, I find that if I start with foil, I just um, end up with the character turning out quite a bit larger than what I really want. So that is why I'm just going to use cotton today. So what you can do... And like I said, I'm going to show you one from start to finish with cotton balls. And I'll also show you one where I at least do an outer coat um, with my fancy um, cotton fiber so that you can see the difference, but also see that a cotton ball is really um, going to do a pretty decent 
job for you. And so I don't really think that any of you who are just starting spun cotton needs to run out and um, get the fancy stuff first. You always should learn, I think, with um, something a little lower quality. And then once you can master that pretty well, then you can move on to something fancier. Okay, so I just put the end, I've unrolled my cotton ball and I put the end around my chenille wire and then I just wrap. Okay. And I'm not gonna make it as big as I want the finished mouse to be. This is just kind of my starting layer and form. Okay. Now, time for just a tiny bit of glue to just wet down the ends of that. I'm not really getting it very wet at all. Just enough to stick those bits of the end fiber down, okay? So that's what we have now. I'm just thinking about the neck and wondering if it's a little too long and if that is the case because it's wire armature there and not just foil, I can I can smush the wire a little bit and kind of shorten it up a little bit. Okay. Now, I'm gonna do a tiny bit more around the neck. And just a tiny dab of the glue mixture. And then we're gonna do more on the head. Now, um, I don't know if you'll, how you'll, you might just want to do a mouse any old way that comes to you, or you may be trying to do the mouse to look a lot like mine, but, like, you can do it with more of a neck, um, which isn't as true to a, a actual mouse's form. This one has a little bit thicker neck. I mean, if you look at, an, at a real mouse, their body's pretty straight. And they wouldn't even have that much neck, I don't think. It's pretty straight, um, like sleek the shape of it so it's kind of up to you I think when we give animals some animals obviously do have a neck um, when we're making a little anthropomorphic character like this we tend to work some sort of humanness into the form so I think the neck just happens um, sometimes a little bit unintentionally just because we're used to um, human characters having you know kind of a bobble head but that's up to you Okay, so see how really this, um, the cotton sticks to itself pretty well. You don't need a lot of glue at this point when you're just getting your basic form. People get really worried that I think that they need a lot of glue to hold this together and that's what makes, um, doing a spun cotton figure really messy and sticky and frustrating and you really don't need nearly that much glue. Like, uh, this isn't feeling sticky at all right now, so I'm not gonna have cotton fluff stuck all over me. Um, okay, so there's our basic little form. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start wrapping the arms and legs and tail because where I join that um, to the body, I want to be going over that later with another layer of cotton so that it's really um, stuck down and it's, you know, it's just um, kind of all one thing and not, I don't have kind of cotton that might get pulled off or something because it's just not, um, not worked in very well. So if I do the joints now, then they're going to be really well covered and a lot more secure. I'll do the same thing with ears pretty soon here. We'll put our ears on and then we'll work the head shape into what we want it to be. Okay, so I don't want a whole lot of cotton for wrapping the arms. And this is where I'm now gonna decide um, 
how long I want them to be. Now I have to commit. Um, so I'm going to trim them. I like to leave the top arms or whatever. It's all legs, I suppose. But I like to leave the top appendages a little bit longer. And especially on this mouse, I decided its bottom legs would be pretty <laughs> short and stubby looking. Um, obviously, in a real mouse, um, there'd be like sorry I've got fluff in my nose um, there'd be a joint higher up and you can make that look more anatomically correct if you want to but I liked the look of the stubby little legs these probably need trimmed even a bit more if you leave the top arms a little bit longer then your mouse is gonna have more um, uh, more options I would say for <laughs> holding things if you leave them way too short then they really can't do anything or hold anything ever so um, that's why I do leave those longer than the bottom okay so I just take a little bit and I want it basically to run out at the end and taper off so I want a very thin bit of cotton and I wrap it very tight and then I'm just gonna make sure I've got a decent amount of glue on my brush you can also like I mentioned earlier use a dab of craft glue or use a straight use the school glue straight at the tip here I might show you how to do that on the other arm little bit I hate when there's kind of a stringy can you see that sometimes you get that which is annoying but it kind of pulled off I'm on camera okay so see how we have a tiny bit of wire showing here I'm just gonna take a little bit of fluff if I can get a decent little piece Okay, let me um, dab a tiny bit. Okay. And then I'm just going to take that little bit of fluff. Get my camera focused. It's very dark today. Goodness. And just wrap and wrap and wrap and twist until it's just... worked in there. Good grief. Let's see if this other arm you can see any better. I'm really sorry the camera is not wanting to do this today. Dab a bit at the end. And then just twist. Okay. And this time it's covered, but it could use just a tiny bit more to give it a tiny bit more bulk and shape. Okay, and you might want it to look um, less tapered and thin than that. You might want it to be more of a paw, and that's up to you. But I went with something a little bit more stylized for this one. Okay, and right now this is not wet at all. It's a tiny bit damp in spots, but it's not wet. Just so you know, I'm not, so you have an idea of how much glue and water I'm putting on here. It is not much. Okay. Now I'm going to do the same thing with the legs and the tail. I'm probably going to trim the legs a little bit more and then I'll help you with the head.
tail is the same exact same concept as the legs or appendages um, so actually this tail isn't quite, I mean it really should kind of look like it's farther back in its rear end um, so we'll get some more cotton there so that it doesn't look so kooky but I'm gonna just wrap the tail in cotton first see if I can find kind of a longer piece of fiber and also you want to decide the length of the tail so this is pretty long right now I'm gonna trim it a little bit I kind of think the length of the body is good but you could have a really long tailed mouse and it could do some interesting tricks and use its tail to do to carry things or climb things I don't know okay so the thinner your bit of cotton that you're working with the smoother you can wrap so can you see that it's not perfect but it's pretty decent and we'll we'll get it wrapped even a little tighter once I've got it Okay, so that turned out just about right for the end and for the amount of cotton that I had. I want that to all get wrapped in there. really struggling with my camera to focus today. It's really just my phone. I've been thinking I need to get an actual camera for this, but they're quite expensive and <laughs> I haven't felt like I get really enough views to warrant that. Um, but we'll see. Okay. So there we've got our tail that turned out pretty well um and now I will probably I think I'll bulk out this bottom part of the mouse it's way too slender <laughs> has nice slender hips the slender hips of a of a young boy um but we're gonna give him or her a little bit thicker haunches And that's going to make sure that everything is well adhered and just the whole piece will be more stable. So I have complaints fairly often about how slow I talk. I tried to make the intro and um, the parts where I have a lot to cover I'm trying to talk faster because I guess I do have a habit of really, I'm from Nebraska and we must really drawl and um, think about what we have to say while <laughs> we're not fast talkers and I think I'm in particular probably worse than other people. I didn't um, really realize it until I started making videos and then I would hear myself and compare and also get comments. Um, and the reason I'm so slow in some of this is because I just don't really have much to say. I'm just wanting you to see the process, but I don't really have much to comment on. So some of these times where there's silence, I just, I don't have anything to instruct you on and nothing is coming to mind where I'm afraid that if I start on some little tangent, then I'll just do the tangent and not give you the instruction. So that's why I'm trying to limit myself to actual relevant information in this tutorial, but I'm um, I'm just addressing the slow talking because I, I guess I am very <laughs> aware of it and I'm trying not to be so painful to listen to. Um, I do know the comparison maybe isn't 
completely fair in some ways because um, I don't script my videos and maybe I should um, <laughs> and also there is this you know technology which will remove all the pauses and um, extra ums and ahs and errs from your um, from whatever you've recorded and so a lot of what we're hearing um, has had that done to it and it, I think it gives us kind of um, a, a unrealistic expectation of how someone might actually talk um, who hasn't um, used that technology to take out all the extra. I, it's not that I'm like anti whatever that is called. I don't know what it's called. Um, but I'm not sure that it's right, feels right for me at this point. And I would have to say a lot of people complain about the length of my make-alongs. Um, they tend to be younger people. And my original audience here has been um, people that are more like 50s and 60s is my demographic. My main de demographic is women in their 50s and 60s. And I think um, most of you all are much more willing to spend an hour listening to me um, drone on. It's just where you are in your life. You're comfortable with that. And if you're in your 20s or 30s, I understand that that's probably not what you're here for. And so in that case, I'm sorry that my videos are long, but you'll have to find someone else who is doing the short form um, because most of um, the people here are looking for a longer form. Okay, so I'm just filling out the shape. And you can see I like to use my paintbrush because um, I think it gives me a little more control and it, I think it does a better job of sticking the fibers down than my fingers do but um, I know people do just use their hands and that works fine for them so I think it's really your preference and whatever seems um, comfortable for you now I've got the shape coming along it's still gonna um Get a few more or at least one more layer probably to give it the final shape and bulk and size um, but that's what I'm gonna have for the body right now because it's starting to get wet enough um, that I'm gonna wanna I'm gonna pop it I I just I'm um, in the last month I used to dry my stuff over vents and then I started drying in the oven my like my regular cooking oven and now I have um, a used toaster oven that I picked up and so that's I've got it under my table here and I, I can just pop things in there to dry for like 20 or 30 minutes and then I can go on to the next coat and know that it is already dry and that I'm not going to have something that um, that I'm putting another wet coat on before it's finished drying. So now I want to show you um, how we're going to put the ears on. Okay, let's do ears. I think that's probably... A tricky part for a lot of people starting out and this is how I do them now I get a little thin layer of cotton and I'm gonna bring it around kind of like a U and just make like a nice little circle of it take my glue and water and just get it wet. Okay, now I've just pulled it into an ear shape. Come on camera, really failing me today. Okay, see that? It's quite thin, almost a little translucent like mouse ears and rabbit ears are. So I like to keep them as thin as I can. Now, this looks quite large. And you might want your mouse to have kind of oversized ears. That gives it a cute sort of goofy personality. Um, I'm going to start with it like this. You can kind of, as you um, attach them, you can kind of crinkle them up. And 
that will make it smaller or looks, you know, it'll you can take something that was larger and if as you make it more into a shell shape, it won't be quite as big like a Dumbo the elephant ear. <laughs> Okay, so I just kind of took the cotton fiber that was at the end of that and wrapped it around the front and over to the side, okay? And this ear isn't going to look as big because I've still got more to do with the face here, so I will kind of work it in and shape it more into kind of a little shell and then the face itself will be a little bit bigger, so it won't look quite that big, but I think it would be cute that way too. Now, if you can't do the ear like that, you can use fabric and just cut a little ear shape. So I'm just gonna cut a little piece and then I'm gonna shape, shape it like an ear. And here too, start with it a little large and you can, especially since it's fabric, you can trim it off even once you've attached it. If you find the ear is too large, you can trim it off with your scissors. Now you can either, um, so you can just attach that with a dab of glue um, and then shape it how you want, like you can kind of bend it like that or you can do that bending once you put the next layer of cotton on. And then you can either leave it cloth like that, which I think looks cute and fine, or you can work at just coating it with very, very thin layers of cotton on the front and back. So that's up to you. But the fabric ear is a good kind of workaround or cheat if you're having trouble with the cotton. Okay, so I'm gonna do my other ear and then I'm going to um, set. Well, actually, I did. I tried both ways. I tried um, setting the eyes when it was wet, and I ended up um, just actually putting them on once it was dry with hot glue because, like I said, this face is going to get filled out more. Um, so I will get the other ear on, let it dry in my little toaster oven, and then we'll pop on our bead eyes. Like I said, if you don't have beads or straight pins to use for the eyes. I'm going to show you how to just make little dot eyes, which are also very cute. Um, so you can do this. And there's probably other things. Oh, you know what I thought you could use is um, peppercorns. So I placed the ear towards the back. And then I'm just wrapping the extra fibers around. It doesn't really matter. Um, they don't have to be perfect um, they can be a little bit lumpy and it's you're gonna go over it later and cover that so don't get too worked up about how the face looks yet and don't get too worked up about the ears being just so yet either because you're going to um, fine-tune all of that in the second coat so let's get him in or her in the oven <laughs> Okay, I wanted to show you kind of the difference between the cotton balls and this fiber, which is what I use for things that I sell. Um, I'm trying to remember because it's been a few weeks. I think I, I don't think, I think with all of these mice that I was making, I did just use the cotton balls because I always want you to be able to do that with the simplest thing and see that I actually get a, a really pretty decent um, finish with cotton balls you don't have to have the fancy um, fiber but I'm making it available because so many of you ask and I'm tired of saying no kind of um, or just like referring you to the website which is fine you can find this this is called cotton sliver um, and it's available at the woolery which is where I source it but you can find other suppliers um, it's not wool it is cotton and it is what you would use to spin cotton yarn. Um, 
you can also spin cotton yarn with these cotton, I don't know if you say punis, like P-U-N-I-S or punis. Um, and this is a short fiber. So you can see it's very fine and short fibers. There you go. Very smooth. So this will give you a very smooth top coat. This is what traditionally they um, with spun cotton they would have started with a long fiber spinning, spinning, spinning. So that's where the spun or the cotton comes from is the spinning of the long fibers around whatever armature they're starting with. I did not originally do the spinning part when I was starting. I just used foil. I have found um, that spinning cotton for animal shapes gives me um, kind of a more fluid look to my animals. They're just a little bit more, they look more um, mobile somehow um, and less want to say stodgy exactly but um, when I start with foil they just look I don't know a little bit more primitive and I think I mentioned that earlier and that's the only way I really know how to describe it um, and I like the primitive lumpy look still sometimes but when I'm selling I have found I think or I believe that most people are wanting a little bit more finished look from me but um, <laughs> I'm not sure sometimes um, if I'm right in assuming the things I do about what people want. And sometimes I'm not sure if I should do things because other people want them or if I should just keep doing what I like. So who knows um, where we should come out there. But okay, anyway, I know this doesn't look like a mouse head yet, but that's how I start. I just get um, a basic shape going. Then I'm going to wrap some more um, around the body and then... I'll show you a little bit later how I use my punies um, to sculpt the top. So I would just do this one the same way as the other. It's just very nice to have um, this long and very smooth. The difference is in these fibers is that the punies, and this is called sliver, um, they do not have the cotton ball you can see has the little lumps. And I have, sh I've in the past used um, even very, very rough cotton batting that was used like as quilt batting and um, as the insides of furniture. <laughs> um, and I really still like that for certain things. Um, and the cotton balls do have a little bit of lumpiness too. So if you want the super, super smooth finish, this is probably the only way you're going to get it. But um, like I said, when you're just starting, it's I, I really think that you don't need to worry about how smooth your um, top finish or whatever look is going to be because most likely it's going to take you a while or several tries um, before you start getting the shapes the way you want them to be. So you might as well just do your experimenting with something cheap and that you already have. And then I don't even know if I ever got to what I meant to say, <laughs> but that was that this these long fibers on the sliver um, are very handy for wrapping like longer appendages because you don't have to worry about your fibers running out and adding more. So that is another reason that it is handy for that. Here's little mouse out of the toaster oven. Um, I think she was probably in 30 minutes or so at about 250. If you set it higher than that, you're going to get a significant amount of browning, which you may like if you're like me. Oh my, here's Matilda. Um, um, so yeah, if you, if you kind of like it to look antique then that browning is, you know, kind of a a plus if you don't like that then keep the temperature definitely below 250 maybe 200 is safer um, so now I'm just going to and this is our cotton ball one I'll show you how the other turns out with um, the fibers I use and that are available in the little starter kit she is still in the oven drying so I'm just going to, going to um, bulk out our little mouse, add some, um, a little bit more size to her and just kind of 
give her a smoother shape and some, I suppose, definition in certain areas so that it looks a little bit more like her arm is continuing back onto her body. Um, we'll make her face nicer and add a little bit more of a haunch here at the bottom. And then I will show you painting, which I actually do now. Um, typically, right, just, you know, as soon as I finish with my final layer of cotton, I go ahead and do my painting while the cotton is wet because I prefer to paint on wet cotton. So we'll do the head and face now. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my eyes and depends on what you have. Um, I think I have three millimeter and four millimeter black beads here and I'm trying to grab one of each but I looks like I'm not coming up with a larger size here okay there's a four these are four millimeter and these are three millimeter um 
I don't know that it matters that much. It, I mean, it does matter if you've got a larger or a smaller mouse. For this mouse, I think I could make either one work. I would just have to cover the four millimeter um, eyes a little bit more. Or it would depend, you know, too, on, like, do you want the eyes to look a little over large or do you want them to be more um, small and beady looking? So uh, I'm going to go with this one. I would say I must have used a four millimeter. I don't know. And I'll have both sizes in the kit. And then, like I said, um, you could use a pin um, that has, like, the bead head and then paint it. Or you could use a peppercorn. Um, and paint that. I think I'm gonna do, let me set these down. I think I'm going to do the three millimeter. So what I'm gonna do is just um, dab a bit of hot glue, but you could, you know, use your school glue or your craft glue, and then I'm gonna put cotton around it um, to really um, kind of stick it in there. Okay, so I've got my little dab of hot glue. And it's going to look super bulbous at first. And um, because I don't have the face fleshed out, like this nose is going to be longer here when I'm done. I don't, and this one I would say, I think I put the eyes a little farther back than what I, I want to try them farther forward this time. I don't know if I should say they're farther back than what I like, but I'm going to try them a little farther forward. So that's where I'm placing my eyes. And let me get the other one on. Okay, it looks very <laughs> goofy right now, but it will look fine once we add more cotton. So I'm probably just going to let music play here again too because I'm just adding layers, thin layers at a time of cotton and that keeps um, the shape smooth. If you add too much at a time, you're going to end up with a lumpy shape that you can't really um, get to look the way you want and it'll end up getting bigger and bigger and bigger. So, oops, so the trick, sorry, sometimes when I'm trying um, to film as I'm, you know, actually making something. I'm watching the camera rather than what I'm making, and then if I watch what I'm actually making, then I don't watch the camera, so it's a little bit, um, I'm sorry that I sometimes put my hands out of frame or bump the camera, but anyway, the trick is to just keep your layers very thin, and that will, um, prevent a lot of that lumpiness. <laughs>
think I've gotten this to the point I am ready to commit to the painting. It's still wet, like I mentioned before, because that's how I prefer to paint. Um, our other mouse is out from her first drying time. Um, so this is with the sliver cotton and um, the punies. And you can see this cotton just handles differently. And so you can get more of this like, I don't know, it's almost turns into, it just looks more like um, a solid surface. It's a little bit more sculptural and you can see it like wrinkles and creases um, more like fabric and some people I see just actually leaving some of this wrinkling creasing effect on their pieces and I think it's really beautiful and you can use it um, more intentionally um, for certain types of animals so obviously I'm going to do um, a coat like I did on the cotton ball one I'll do a big coating with the short fiber punies um, and add eyes and things with this one, which I won't show you, but I just wanted to show you how it um, it definitely does um, look different, and you can see how it's going to give you a smoother finish at the end. Um, but now I'm going to go ahead and I make sure that all the parts of your mouse, if you're trying to paint it wet like I am, that they are wet, like it will help you if the ears are wet, um, because... I like the way the color just bleeds through the fibers, um, if that is how it is. So um, if you're going to try painting wet, make sure that every part is actually wet. Like I'm going to get my tail damp here. And then I think it's all pretty much ready to go. But I forgot I don't have my... Oh no, I do have water here, so I'm ready. Okay. I'm going to put my glue here water jar and um, I didn't mention but I do usually you can use coffee and you can um, paint your mouse mostly just with coffee or only with coffee if you don't have other paints you can just paint the back kind of brown and leave your belly white and that can be fine I probably will use a bit of coffee but I'm going to use um, watercolors so doesn't take a lot of color. I think I'll do, I like kind of brownie gray mice. I don't know what, you know, I don't know what the preference is, but I always, um, and I've tried a few white mice. They don't look quite as um, natural, I guess. I'm used to kind of the field mouse look when I do things, but I think a white, white mouse or a polka dot mouse would be really cute. So maybe one of you will do that and share how it looks. So I'm just basically mixing brown and black and I'm going to see how it goes on and if I like it or if I need to add a little bit more. This is more gray than be more like a house mouse color. I don't know what kind of mice. I always was taught that the house mice were more gray and smaller and the field mice were brown and plumper. Now one of the big um, differences that you will see between the fibers um, is that the punies just take paint and color differently. Um, the cotton balls I believe are probably a bleached fiber rather than the natural cotton color and so they don't ever take the color quite as nicely in my opinion as the natural fibers that haven't been bleached there's just always something where the color doesn't come off as quite as true maybe so that's where some of you who are using watercolors might feel frustrated and so a paint an acrylic paint um, might get you results that you like a little better so what I'm going to do um, now that I have some color on the back is, I guess I said I was going to use watercolor, but this is what I do. Um, I don't like to leave, like I said, this is bleached, so it's, it's not a very natural white. I mean, nothing, I shouldn't say that, there's probably things, but most things in nature, especially an animal that's living in the ground, um, is not going to have like a snow white 
belly. So I use um, an off-white, this is a vintage white folk art acrylic paint, and I just dab it onto the belly and neck and all of these kind of undersides that would be whitish, off-whitish. And I like to bleed the color over um, into the darker areas to blend it. So just keep your brush wet and let that color bleed and then you can come back in if you need to and touch up places if it bled too much or too far. Um, but this is where I think um, painting the fibers wet just gives you, I don't know, a, a more natural look maybe or it does some of the work, having the fibers wet does some of the work for you. Maybe it's just like a dummy proof method of painting, I'm not sure. Um, I have a really good friend who does like amazing cotton work and I she like her painting is particularly well I shouldn't say that every part of what she does is amazing this you know the actual sculpting itself is beyond anything I could ever do um, and her painting is too and I'm fairly certain that she always paints dry and gets amazing results with that so uh, for whatever reason this is what I do right now but um, maybe down the road I will decide that there's a different way that I'm going to try or endorse or adopt. Okay. So I like, um, I like that white to come out, peek out, um, I think the way it, it does with the real animal. You can see it's white on the bottom coming up around the back side. Okay, so now, and I like it to go around the eyes too. Um, one thing I didn't mention when we were sculpting is you can um, take a straight pin or a needle or a piece of wire and when your cotton is wet, you can make some little indentations for your nose or mouth or however you feel like you want to manipulate that fiber while it's wet. It might not um, stay quite that distinct as it dries, but there will be some impression left, and that's sometimes a nice little added detail, but not necessary, just something you can try if you want to. I'm trying to get a little mouth there, but it's not really wanting to We'll see what it comes out like when it's dry. Okay, so then I'm going to, I'll come back in with a little bit more brown probably, but now I'm going to do the tail, and um, I'm going to do rosy cheeks, and a little bit of, and pink um, ears, and then a little bit on the nose probably. I just kind of mix some different pinky ready you get more than you want, you can always just water it down or... And I like for the ears to have a tiny bit of... I like them to be a little bit more peachy. So I add a bit of yellow. See how that just pulls it down? So having it wet does some of that work for you. So I'm going to come back in at the mouth and nose area and add some white because it usually bleeds there a little bit beyond where I would. I think I'll get my smaller brush for the cheeks. Okay. It's kind of up to you and it, like I said, if it gets beyond you, especially if you have acrylic paint, you can you can fix those areas or you can just use a little water and try to wash out the color a little bit. So see how I just added a drop of water and that took kind of that red dot and just bled it out a bit to be more blushy. Okay. And actually that isn't looking too bad at the mouth, honestly. I'm going to put a dab of white there to bring 
it in a little bit, but I don't think actually that looks too bad. I just want those little um, whisker places to be more white. Okay. Now, I'm looking at the face and it looks a little off center, I think because um, I need to add brown here. And then you can look back here and you'll see your ears sometimes bleed and you can either leave that if you like that look or like I said I'm going to add a little bit of brown back in up here so I'll add a little and right now I'm using coffee because I don't like this to get too dark right here and coffee will just give me it'll just mellow out that white a little bit but it won't turn it super dark there I'm going to do back here just a touch of the brown. Okay. I think that's pretty good. I'm trying to see if this face is a little cockeyed. Maybe if I can smush in that cheek a little bit. Like I said, this is my first time using bead eyes, and they kind of, I'm not sure if they're easier or not. In some ways they are, if you're intimidated by painting an eye. In other ways, I think they're hard to get set just, just right. Okay, he does not have a perfect, he or she does not have a perfectly symmetrical face, but I don't know that I'm going to that more with it. I think I'm just going to see how much I can press this side in because like I said the cotton is still wet so it's malleable and I can still manipulate it some. It could actually be that um, I don't have quite as much cheek on this side. I'm not sure but I'm, I think I'm going to leave him a little bit um, lopsided because I liked how his ear, um, this must be a him because I can't stop calling him him. Um, I liked how his ear was flopped down a little bashful looking, so maybe he's just going to be kind of lopsided like that. I think sometimes uh, it doesn't really pay to fight too much against the direction a piece is going because um, what I found is it will just keep going that direction, whatever you do. Um, so just, just go with it and embrace whatever the little character is becoming and... Um, try not to be so forceful with um, your initial idea maybe. Okay, now all we need to do is you can do the toaster oven, you can do an oven, you can do a vent, um, whatever you want um, to get it dry. And some of you have asked how long, and it just depends so much on your conditions, um, your weather conditions, your house, the thickness of your layers of cotton. It's really hard for me to answer, but I mean in most cases if you're not doing anything to speed it along, a couple days should be long enough for everything to be very, very, very dry. Usually one day should be enough, but anyway, we'll just come back when this is dry and we'll add a bit of detail with some, um, you know, brownish black paint for the mouth and maybe a few little whisker spots and then on the paws and we're pretty much done. And I did, um, I added pink on this one. I don't know if I'm going to add pink for these paws, so for now I'm just going to leave them and we'll come back and finish him up pretty quickly. Okay, he is out of the oven. This is how he's looking. You can see there are a few little lumps maybe in odd places, but it's just what you get with cotton balls, and I'm okay with that. Um, you see that the colors darken as it dries. He's not quite dry, there's still a little bit of dampness, but dry enough to paint the last little details. So we've just got a little brown, and I know it is getting dark, um, getting to the end of the good daylight. I've got a little brown and black mix of watercolor on my brush. I try not to get too dark 
pour too much on my brush because I don't want to just get a stark, stark line. I like it to be a little bit more subtle, but it's more, more visible than it is so far. Sure, what's going on here? That's what happens when you're trying not to overdo it. Is sometimes you don't do anything at all. Okay, so we've got a little bit of outline there to his nose. I'm not quite sure what I'm going to do for his mouth here. It's, I always just make a little dab and see where I go from there. I you could make a sad mouth, um, mouse or mouth, but I. I tend to make my animals looking pleasant because I don't really need encouragement to feel sad most days. So there's his happy little mouth. You can do a few freckles. They're not really freckles. It's more like those little, it's where the whiskers would be. Um, and you could definitely do some sort of a thread or um, whisker with fishing line or something like that, but I usually don't. Just putting a bit of shadow there in the corner of the eye. Okay, that's probably, oh, I guess one thing I, now I didn't do the pause pink on this one. Um, that's, you know, your preference. I, I like both, but I decided not to on this one because the paws are so small that I didn't really think it mattered that much. Just putting a tiny bit of detailing to make it look like he's got some little fingers. Like I said, I really didn't want to have my brush overly wet. And I'm working with it a bit too dry, really. There we go. Okay, a little bit of detailing there, and here he is. Humphrey might be a name for this guy, we'll see. Um, so, this video is just the mouse. I think we can go a lot of places from with this mouse, or starting from here with the mouse. I want to make a lot of... Um, different things. I want to show you how to dress your mouse. I want to show you how to give your mouse like fabric clothes and also spun cotton clothes. I want to make houses and um, little accessories for the mouse. So I think we're going to just take this year and focus on our mice that we start with and just really flush out homes and personalities and and go that direction. So that's kind of what I'm thinking. Um, I, I'll see. I'll, I'll try to bring in <laughs> the other one. Um, the other little mouse while I still have a bit of light and do the painted on eyes for you. Okay, here's our mouse with the more professional fiber. I think I'm going to add a bit more pink to the tail. You can see how the paint has um, spread out some. That is what happens when you paint wet. I like that effect. It's a little bit like if you were putting glaze on pottery or ceramic. If you don't, if you want to have more control over how your paint looks and how it dries, then I would say paint um, with your character either completely dry or mostly dry, and that way you'll have a better idea of exactly how it's going to look um, as your character dries. But I'm pretty happy with this. I think it looks antique -y. and I'm just going to leave it, and I'm going to um, do some little eyes. So you could try just using watercolor um, and just doing some black dots. I'm going to use my acrylic because it just gives a little bit sharper eye than the watercolor. Um, it's more distinct. I'm going to try to make this as simple as I can. So just a very, very basic shape. You could do a tiny eye and not just do a dot and leave it. That's what I did with that one, very simple. Um, or you can do a little bit larger. 
like I'm doing here. The trick with eyes is getting them halfway lined up. Um, I don't know if people have tricks. Sometimes I get pretty far off and have to just start over. So I don't really have a good trick for it. I mean, I suppose if you were really a um, meticulous person, you might actually measure and like mark with something before you paint, but that is not my style. Okay, that is close enough for me. Um, I don't know if I should risk using just my straight black acrylic paint here. I sometimes think that makes the nose look a little too... a little too stark. Okay, I'm gonna try the mouth like that, which is a little bit more ambivalent, like... I don't know how you would read that. It's a confused looking mouse or a hard to read mouse. <laughs> but I, I tend to make everything look very, very happy, so I'm just gonna give it that mouth for now and see what I think about it. That's the benefit of doing a bunch of these is um, you can play around. Okay, now if you want to give the eyes a little sparkle, just do a dot of your acrylic. Okay, and if the dot gets too big, that one's better. So what I'm going to do on this side where probably my brush was a little too wet, I'm just going to come back in with my black and fill in a little of that. There we go. That's all I would do, and I will I'll give her a few freckles, um, and probably do a couple lines on her feet again. See, I'm calling this one a she, and I have no idea why. That's what I mean. There is some some sort of um, character, just like kids, you know, come out with a little bit of character. There, I gave her a tiny bit of a smile. A Mona Lisa smile. This might be Mona Mouse. Or Mona Lisa Mouse. Okay, but they kind of do have their own ideas, so um, just try to honor that and not fight it if you can help it. And it will go better for you than if you just um, have your own ideas and think that you can't if you can't carry them out or if it's not going how you thought that it's a waste or a failure. There we go. So I don't know what you prefer, bead eyes, painted eyes. I'm used to my painted eyes, so I suppose I kind of just out of comfort I prefer that at this point. But I do I do think the bead eyes have some appeal. So there we have our two mice and you can probably see the there is some difference in the smoothness um, of the fiber. I think I need to fix her ear back there a little bit, add a bit of pink. But it's not huge, really. If you take your time with the cotton balls, you can get a pretty smooth um, texture and appearance. So, I, you know, I do have the kits available just because people like to use um, what someone else is using. Um, but you really can get by pretty well with a plain old cotton ball. So there are all our little mice, and we will have some fun with these mice um, as the year goes on. I'll bring in these guys in the back. Um, I don't know what the heck I'm going to do with all these mice. I guess they have to get some dollhouses. Um, thank you so much for watching. I might do a real outro, so I'll just, I'll just come down here and give you a close-up. I hope you enjoyed this. I think these, this was our first one. I was trying to, you know, get close to that. I think these turned out really sweet. I really like their faces and personalities. So fun, guys. I hope that this is going to be a fun little mouse journey for us this year.
Thank you so much. Um, please like and subscribe, comment with ideas or criticisms or encouragement. I appreciate all of it, except the really mean criticisms I can do without the harshness. Um, but I'll try to take constructive criticism on board. So thank you so much, and I will see you soon. Happy making.